Sinead O'Connor, as far as I'm concerned, she's one of my family, my extended family. I think things are going beyond nation now. It's, it's now all about the spirit, like minds. That's what it's about now. This little pigeonhole crap is not going to happen no more. It, we've all got to join up now. And she's a warrior queen in terms of music, just batting down all negativity. You know what I mean? And I think she's, I think she's for what she's been through in her life, I don't even know half of it, not even a third. And she's still going. You know what I mean, dearly? That's a warrior queen. Trust me. In Dublin's fair city Where the girls are so pretty I first lay This is a record I've wanted to make for a very long time and it is very much my own voice in a way that I wouldn't have been able to do with pop records and stuff, you know. And I feel creatively as a songwriter or a singer that I won't be able to move forward until I sing these songs and, and do this record, you know what I mean? That it's something that, it's like it's all in there just bursting to come out. Songs carry waves. They're surrounded by all sorts of memories. Music is one of the most fundamental memories we have. It's rhythmic, so it's located in the body. And that means that we carry it everywhere and we remember it from our very early youth. So in trying to come to terms with our lives, the songs that accompanied us from that time, they're the songs that we need to listen to to sing, to sing so that you sing out whatever was in them that hurt you, or to sing them into a new context. I think that Sinead, throughout her life, has, has uh, picked up songs, traditional songs, which um, have sort of stayed with her. And I think some of them are very personal to her because they're from her childhood, and some of them she learned from her dad. You know, and she even retains some changes that crept in from uh, her dad's renditions of them as well. You know, so uh, uh, I think that that's a, a very very sweet thing. For me, I suppose as a singer, I don't know how other people think, but for me as a singer, often I'll hear these kind of songs and, and uh, almost get a glimpse of the person who wrote them at the moment that they wrote them and what it was in their lives that made them write it, you know? There's something about that that you almost get a glimpse of the person who wrote it who is obviously long dead and long gone, but you, you somehow they're alive just through the song and they almost come into you and start speaking.
to do these songs, I think you do have to have a certain relationship with suffering, for want of a better word, which I think everyone does, do you know what I mean? But but I think the the people who, who pull off a lot of them are people who uh, aren't frightened of a big emotion or suffering or difficult feelings, you know what I mean? The people who are quite repressed emotionally would have a hard time, I think, with the songs, you know what I mean? Or, or people who are afraid to be shattered by a song, do you know what I mean? That kind of thing. Sometimes you can just avoid a song because it'll make you cry, <laughs> you know what I mean? But those are the ones you should sing, kind of thing. And as he lay dying, I heard his last cry. If you were here, lovely Nancy, I'd be willing to die. And as I told her this story in anguish, she fled. I don't think that uh, Sinead's going to sing an, an unaccompanied song on this. There were a few possibilities, but they went by the way as, as we worked our way through. So I think everything will have accompaniment, although there may be some which are in which it's very, very gentle. So that, and there'll be others which will have very serious rhythm added as well, which will make them quite contemporary, in fact. The involvement of Adrian Sherwood in the project is, is going to really uh, bring the modern directly into contact with the traditional. So when she came to do the, the acoustic recording, she said to me she kind of wanted to make the Irish music a bit sexier. That's the quote unquote. Meaning, you know, because with reggae, you've got this big, fat, warm bottom end, and there's more space in the music than in, in any other music. And that's why a lot of people like dub or reggae music, because it's, um, apart from the spiritual feel of a lot of the, the, the lyrics, the, the, the space and the warmth of the sound. She, her intention was to, to marry that with the Irish music. I'm a roots reggae fan, a roots and culture style of reggae as opposed to lover's rock or anything is the type which is very um, religious or, or spiritual. And it has particular sounds and in, in one in particular is a thing called Naya Bingi, which is a drum sound. It's a kind of magical Rasta rhythm that just goes kind of voo, 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 voo like that you know so things like that will layer up and put on the track and um, there's a Jamaican guy who lives in London called Bubblers who's a keyboard player plays amazing Jamaican bass keyboard but this one is more traditional as they say is and they will give me the insights and well look we're going to be using more traditional um, Irish instruments and things like that so it was a new a new coming for me like going, mm, oh and you listen to it and there's a lot of influences like even what we have with the Jama there's a lot of um a connection, I say, like... It was almost coming home, but in a different home, in a certain way, you know what I mean? So it wasn't really strange. It's got, oh, OK, little penny whistles, the things like that, the, the guitar styles and things like that. It's very similar to Mento, but we do it in our own way but it wasn't strange, because like, it wasn't a war of music, it was a coming together of music. I think that Sinead appreciates the rhythm of the, of the language of the song, and uh, that's what makes a good song. The language has a rhythmic quality and has a lyricism which, which fulfills the song, I suppose, which makes a song. It's like a poem as well, you know. <laughs> Da kanal mutsas 
Shannos, like the literal term, Shannos is old way. And uh, I think every country in its culture has the old way. And in some countries it has survived intact, and in other countries it's vanished. Uh, I think we're lucky that we have, uh, uh, that the, the tradition has continued unbroken, and that there's still great Shannos singing around the country. To me, there's something defined about singing some of those songs at all because it's thought of as being so uncool among people like me or my age or people I know. Do you know what I mean? That you know, it's, it's like God, you wouldn't go near that stuff. That's for trad heads, kind of thing. You know. I know of people who couldn't speak English at all, but yet who sang songs in English. They were able to learn songs uh, because their oral memory was so strong. They were able to learn at least approximately what uh, the words were. So the Irish speakers didn't differ differentiate between English songs and Irish songs often. Uh, at least they certainly liked English songs if they were good. So English songs have been welcomed into Ireland. They were brought with conquest, but they stayed as honoured guests. Well, if my Irish lad is lost, he's the one I do adore and say. Far away from the Murloc 
I must admit, I would prefer to sing an Irish song any time myself. And it means much more to me than singing an English song. And that's because I was brought up with the Irish language, I suppose. And um, I also find those who cannot speak English, a lot of the time, they would prefer an Irish song. They love the sound of the Irish, you know, and the songs. And um, I'm always at my happiest when I'm singing an Irish song. She the Vavan Bullion were the bear black who vain even or no evil shall have mere more. So it's ill to less no gall of Oro she the Vahuel, Oro she the Vahuel, Oro she the Vahuel, Nishad Achton Tower. She the Vavan Bullion were the bear black to that. Oro Shedavahawala, obviously the first time I heard that was at school, being a little kid, and they sort of drilled those kind of songs into you, but they never really told you what they were about. It's a song for wishing for Irish freedom, wishing for help to come from France or Spain and to drive out the foreigners, which in that case means the British, the English, who were the rulers of Ireland for many, many years. It's not a very politically correct song today. Nevertheless, it's a very powerful song, and it's again a song that we all learned as children in less complicated days, perhaps. And so it remains with us uh, on that personal level. As I was telling you the other day, what I like about it is the, the narrator is really a guy, and whoever is speaking in the song is a man, and I really like the idea of it, that this man has written the song honouring the power of women and the warriorness of women, you know, and celebrating the return of this woman to her rights or her rightful place, you know, because um, normally, obviously, those kind of songs are written by women, you know, and they're kind of corny too, like, I'm woman, hear me roar, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm woman, hear me for it. very careful to foreground the voice at all times, which is an essential characteristic in traditional song. Hear ye boys, now take my advice to America, have his nothing coming. The lyrics are important. 
contour. And that's one of the main pillars in any song tradition, and it's certainly one that we've heard again and again and again. Abudora, say the song. I thought it was quite a brave song because obviously people are afraid of, to be critical of, of war almost, you know, or to be critical of, you know, America or, or, or its in, encouragement of uh, aggressive, you know, f force, you know. And again, it didn't, it's very hard to write protest songs without being corny, you know, and it's not a corny song. Again, it gets straight to the feeling. It, it's not black and white like a history book. It gets straight to the actual reality of war and the effects of that on the soul, you know. So, um, so in, in the context of what's going on in the world, you know, today, I, I find it quite relevant. <clears throat> By the Hush Me Boys is a terrible indictment of war, and particularly of civil war, but just, you know, in the case of poor old Joe Soap getting involved in somebody else's conflict, it's very topical at the minute. And the criticism is all the sharper for the fact that it is more subtle. To the devil I would say, God. There will be many undertones in this album and uh, we've touched upon the political. There's also to me a sort of religious undertone for want of a better word. And I don't really like the word religion because it can be off-putting to some people. But since I've been very young, I've been passionately in love with whatever you call that up there, which some people call jazz, some call God, the Jews don't call it anything at all, you know. Um, but the, I, I guess I would call it the Holy Spirit if I had to choose. So to me, I'm praying when I'm singing, I'm talking to that, that that's what the singing bird is to me. I've seen the lark so high at noon Heard his song up in the blue I first heard the singing bird, it was the McPeaks singing it on a record and uh, with no music, you know. Uh, and, and even that, I mean, it's so beautiful. I'm almost laughing at you asking me, is it soul music or are those songs soul music? Because so obviously they are, they've survived for, for hundreds of years, some of them, and they are ghosts, as, as lots of people have been saying, and what's a ghost, only a soul.
Um, yeah, the long note, she just belts that note out. And that's something she shares with the old singers as well. Just that longing, that absolute want that she just, it's like wanting to be rejoined with the lover, with the loved one. In the Sufi tradition, in the Muslim tradition, it's wanting to be rejoined with God, who is conceived and imagined as the lover. For a lot of artists to try, you know, making a, a record or to attempt to make a record that sounds unique, you're, you're in in the risk um, of alienating the support of the record company because that they're scared perhaps to go into uncharted territory, you know. Or, or you know, Sinead could make a religious album or an album of, of hymns. She can make an album of uh, traditional Irish songs, or she can make a straight ahead album of love songs or or whatever. You know, she's she's got the talent to do that. So uh, she can afford to take chances, but a lot of the problem with the record industry at the moment is people don't take those chances or do things for the right reasons. They do it because they're motivated by a contract or or the desire to um, play the you know the bullshit record game and try and uh, make money. And I'm no different. I've done that. I'm afraid too many times as well. Wanting to be a soul singer comes from that whole traditional thing, which although, say, I've been making pop records, for want of a better word, but so people would presume that you've not been inspired by anything else, but of course we've all been inspired by millions of things. So to me, it's not so much a journey I've just started. It's something that started despite me years ago, you know? Um, and I've been trying to make this record for about 12 years, but I could never talk mainstream record companies into going for it because they've just had such a mindset about it, you know? So um, it's, it's only something I've just been able to do right now because I'm not signed to a major label and don't want to. It's a bit like acting, really, singing, you know what I mean? You have to become the song and you become the ghost, if you like, which is in a lot of these songs, you know? So you're having to deal with some pretty heavy emotions, which you may not have necessarily experienced yourself, but once you begin to inhabit a song or let it inhabit you, you start to feel all these things that, you know, the writer must have felt. And all like a song like Lord Franklin, I'd never heard it. And I was sort of dismissing it when Donald suggested it to me, going, nah, that's a boy's song, kind of. So we sat down and we, we sang our way through the song, it came to the last verse, and she sang the first line of the last verse and just burst into tears on the spot. It was like she revealed the song to herself as she was singing, and it was a, a unique moment.
some of the songs really would would get me now personally, you know, emotionally as well. And uh, I feel if I close my eyes when I'm singing that kind of a song, that well, it's for me as well as for the audience. And I can really feel if if it gets to the audience as well or whoever is listening. And uh, especially, I think songs that are local songs. I feel if I'm singing an Inish more and it's a local song that uh, the people really sort of listen more carefully and take it in better, you know. And uh, they get the same feeling as I get. I feel that they are emotionally involved with that song as well. <laughs> By a god fair in Loenis Marugu, Gusen in Rigre, Marcel Yapogu. My father was the first person to teach me songs. He taught me. Mode. Uh, it's called and um she <laughs> and um yeah i learned those songs and then at school a little bit then when i got a little bit older trasni villan she's a shano singer from nishmore um came to the island and she gave lessons as well so i learned some songs from her too when to a herim was when to When to a yawk yas When to a cry a villar I guess it's such a romantic story. Like to me, especially, I love the lines in the last verse about, um, and then Lord Baker ran to his darling of 21 steps, he made but three. 
that's that was what really drew me in. That is so romantic, and you often hear songs that involve men and romance and all, but you, it's just the physical description of the guy tearing up the stairs to his woman and, and being prepared to just leave anything for her and all that stuff, and, and just the strength of the love that's in the song that these people could bear being apart for 14 years for some reason, which isn't explained in the song other than that her dad's going to bleed and kill her. A singling of houses And I have been All Northumber Belongs to me I would will them all To you, my darling If out of prison Lord Baker is one of the great old classic ballads collected by Francis J. Child in the late 19th century uh, and published by him, and which is now known as the Child Ballad Collection. And anything that's in Child is, has been exalted to become a canonic text. I don't know whether you brought it in there or whether it came in there. We were just feeling Yes, yeah. feeling Yeah, but yeah. Are you, was this earlier on? Yeah, when it, yeah. When it appeared first. Yeah, I think this is the thing. It's like a, there, there might be um, there might be a, a little bit from Sharon that might work earlier on, just right. as a sort of you know. Of course. Yeah, which wouldn't disturb the vibe at all. But. Christy got the song from a singer in Boyle, a traveller by the name of John Riley. And uh, Christy, since that, has, if you like, rounded the song up in certain ways. He has uh, added his own um, touches to it uh, to give it more shape and structure. And uh, it, it's very interesting. The, the verses vary in length and vary in melody. The brave young doing earlier John Riley songs, like say when I would have been doing the Raggle Taggle Gypsy or the Well Below the Valley or Tipping It Up to Nancy or As I Roved Out or any of those John Riley songs, I would have learnt the words and the tune and then just sung it. But with this, uh, I, I tried to capture his phrasing. I mean, just listening to Sinead singing it there, I realised that some of the phrasing that John had has lived right through to this version. It's great, like, just the phrases have lived, John Riley's phrasing has lived on. But in order to do that, uh, it took a long, long time to learn it. For many singers, um, actually singing songs is the, if you like, the most important reality in their lives. Uh, there are many singers who, who uh, aren't, if you like, aren't fully realised unless they're singing. And uh, I, I think that that, uh, I, I see this in Christie and in Sinead, that, that when they're singing, they're engaged with something which they have uh, a, a complete grasp of. It's a, it's a world which they enter and, and uh, which is very real in, in their grasp of it and in their delivery of it. So it's, it's a matter of bringing a song to life, making a song, making a song uh, get up and walk. Stall my comb, 
But that's all right till I get home She's handsome, she's pretty She's the belle of Belfast City She's courting one, two, three Please won't you tell me who is she? She comes as white as snow, rings on her fingers, bells on her toes. Danny Murphy says she'll die if she doesn't get the fellow with the rolling eye. She's handsome, she's pretty, she's a belle of Belfast City. She's courting one, two, three. Please, won't you tell me who is she? Sinead O'Connor has an amazing range of vocal timbres. She has the strong, resonant public note that she can project to a huge stadium and then she has this whisper that never sounds like a whisper that's always musical no, no matter and she makes it all hang together in a complete whole which is quite an achievement. Sinead has never been afraid of controversy and maybe she's unusual in that respect in an Irish context in that most of us sort of deal with our skeletons very much in private but Sinead has been kind of has taken them on at their own game really For me, Peggy Gordon, and again, I can't explain why, but just certain things will mean things to me because that's me. That I respond to that song because I first heard it from a bunch of lesbians in Ireland. That I, I heard a particular woman singing that song, and I know this woman well, and she's someone who had broken up with someone that she'd lived with for years, and her heartbreak at the loss of her domestic life and of the relationship that she had, she would express by singing Peggy Gordon. So to me, I always associate that song with homosexuality in Ireland, you know, uh, for women in particular. Romantic relationships, heterosexual or otherwise, are very fragile, but homosexual relationships are very, very fragile, obviously, because of the nature of the fact that other people are so disproving. So, again, it's an, that would be the last explanation you would have expected, but for me, that's Peggy Gordon is a very important song for Ireland in my heart from that point of view, the association. I wish I was in
always try to uh, put things together that don't normally go together. Yeah. And it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's quite fun. There's something yeah. of that in this record, I think, yeah. isn't there? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of it, yeah. yeah. Well, when you think about it conceptually, it's like, I don't think that'll work. But then when you sit down and listen to it, it's a whole nother thing. Sure. Because it's actuality rather than concept, if you know what I mean. Sure. And I think a lot of music gets lost because somebody don't think it'll work together. Sure. And eventually somebody will think, and they make a ton of money, and then everybody starts pretending to be them. <laughs> I want another group just like that. <laughs> I said it's, and it's very important I stress that because the music, like I said, from the, Jam the Jamaican sides that I know and the Irish folk music and things like that, now it's two different styles of playing, but instrumentations and things like that are very similar. And the, the grooves and the, and the, um, in, the internal, what do you say, the internal yearning, because there's a lot of, like, in Sinead's music, it's very deep and spiritual, I find. but it's, it's war out there right now, it's war. And as far as I'm concerned, churches, education have all failed. It's left to the singers and the players of instruments to get to the people and touch their spirit, clean them up, um, tell them to clean up, you know, just relate, you know. It's us, in war, you always have the players and the singers of instruments going forefront on the battlefield in front of the soldiers. Peculiar people we are. Mm -hmm. Without no guns or nothing else to protect us, just a bloody bugle, a drum, boom, ba dum and a flag in front of everybody else. And sings in sweet. 